how does the internet actually get to your door? We're on to a lighter subject. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, is it's all pretty simple. You know, it's, it's a matter of plugging in a bunch of networks together. And the complicated part is just getting across all of the land. So what I want to do today is just kind of show you going into a data center, seeing those networks getting connected, and then taking a look in the manholes, seeing where these wires are actually going. So with that, you know, what is the internet? And like I said, it's smaller networks. So the beauty of the internet is, is clients, you know, your cell phone, this laptop, can request information from any other computer or client on its network and just get that information back. And it's being sent back and forth with these little messages in the form of data. So pictures, all that good stuff. Um, what we're really looking for, though, is to plug everything into more and more networks, and then it becomes the internet, of where all of a sudden you can just get whatever you want. Uh, in order to kind of find out how this all works, though, you've got to kind of roll it back, because our internet is being delivered in a really old fashion. Um, you know, it all kind of stems back to Alexander Graham Bell's uh, telephone network. So the first telephone transmitter was a, you know, just hard line where it went straight to one other phone. And and with that being the case, you pretty much just picked it up, and I could get somebody at the bar to bring me a beer. Fantastic. Uh, but if you wanted to call anyone else, that wasn't really an option. So it didn't take long to find out that the power of this tool was really in being able to call anyone, anywhere, anytime. And so these switchboards were developed. So instead of me running that cable just straight to the bar, we sent it all to a centralized building. So that building was just called this central office, where all of a sudden you have all these switchboards where your call can be connected to someone else. So this is really laying the foundation of how we're delivering internet today, which is kind of scary. So you have this central office that can help you connect calls you know, from just house to house in the same city. Well, what kind of follows with that is then how do I make a long distance call? So you have to run this infrastructure from each central office uh, from town to town. And so we do that very simply by just following how we already connect all of our cities and towns. And that's with roads, essentially. You know, we came in from Santa Rosa, and as we were driving down, uh, you know, we're looking along the 101, and you've got these, you know, the all of these telephone lines running down the highway. So what happened, though, is obviously this has evolved a little bit from that copper infrastructure to where all of a sudden we're running this big fiber backbone all over the country. And this infrastructure has blown up. So now it looks a lot like the road system, except way more. Um, so now we have all these little dots on here, though. And each of these dots are a data center. And what's happening in those data centers is everyone is just plugging their networks together. So Sonic, being an ISP, we have our own network, and what we want to do is plug that into someone's like Amazon's, uh, Facebook's, and that way we can get that information delivered right to you. And that's really what these data centers are all about. But the interesting thing is here, we don't want to stop with just the United States. We want to run that all over the world. So it's really nice because with these roads, you have to stop at oceans. Turns out with fiber, you can just lay it along the sea floor. Um, so you've got these fiber optic cables going from country to country. So when we want to plug into someone like the BBC's network, we're able to traverse across the country and then go across the ocean as well. And we're all just plugged into this same network. And so that really is the heart of it, is plug everything into each other, which is really simple at its heart. So. What I want to do is take a look inside one of those little dots. Let's take a look inside one of these data centers and kind of see what they're all about. So this is a picture of the Palo Alto Internet Exchange and PAX for short. So originally, it was a, just a schoolhouse in the 1800s. And they kept the old facade, actually. This building was bought by the telephone company. And you could actually just walk in on that first floor and pay your phone bill. And on the second floor is where all those switchboards were. So whenever you were making your phone call, they would just connect you to whoever you needed to be connected to. But this building is very, very important because of its history. This is where all those wires are run. So when we're looking at it from that big macro view across the country, you know, really what we're looking at here is all of these different lines coming into this building. And you can see that just behind that facade, it kind of ticks up and goes all the way back. Uh, this is now a state-of-the-art data center. So this same building 
is very important because of all of this older infrastructure that's already been run and has been upgraded to all of these backbone fiber lines. And what the colors are representing is different companies, so different networks that are bringing their backbone into this building. So let's take a look at some of our equipment that's in there. And it's actually pretty funny because we look at this and if you're a Sonic customer, there's actually a 50% chance that your traffic flows through that equipment right there. So all of those yellow cables are what are making all of this work here. And those yellow cables pretty much represent the Sonic network, but we're plugging into everyone else's. So I mentioned plugging into Facebook's network, plugging into someone's like Amazon's network, plugging into Yahoo's. And that's what all of those are. They're all label makered and you know, you're just like, don't unplug that. That, um, you know, because otherwise you can't get to Amazon. Um, and that's really the core of it right there. We have our routing and transport equipment that is able to connect these networks. So we're in this data center, and as we kind of take a walk around, one of the most important things here is if you look at those big black towers there, you can see all the colored wires going in. Those are all for power. Uh, all of this routing and transport equipment is very, very power hungry. And because of that, one of the data center's most important things that it can do is provide clean, uninterrupted power. Um, in addition to that, really, it needs to keep the room cool. By using all that power, we're generating a ton of heat. And it's really fun because at the data center in Santa Rosa, uh, I give tours in there from time to time, and the whole floor is all hollow. And so you get these like uh, suction cup things. And if you pull up the floor, there is so much air conditioning running through there that it will actually blow your hair back. And the thing that's great about it is I tell everyone that. I have them stand in front of it, and then I do it, and they're like, oh my god, my hair is blowing back. Um, and it's like, yeah, dude, I told you. That was what was going to happen. Um, it's really cold. So anyway, in the bottom right, I just kind of thought this one was fun. This is a picture of one of our competitors. I don't know how they know what wire goes where, uh, but apparently they're plugged into other networks. So anyway, you know, I've been mentioning fiber and, you know, I know you guys have heard about this and it's obviously something that is thrown around a lot. Um, wh what really is it? Well, I have a picture here that shows that there's the buffer. The buffer is really just to protect this ultra pure glass. This stuff is really fragile because it is really small, uh, just ultra pure glass that we've got shooting light through. So the core and the cladding are where the actual magic is happening, really. Um, that's where all the important stuff happens. So we have this core where it's essentially just a rod that we can just shoot light through. And it, that's all well and good as long as you're going perfectly straight, but you're not. So how do we make it work going around corners? Well, if you're at the lake, um, you know, if you're standing in the water and you put your feet in and you look straight down, what do you see? You see your feet. You see, yeah, you see the bottom of the water, right? Well, so if you start to lean your head over, then you start to see your reflection. That's when all of a sudden you see everything reflected. And the reason that you see that is because of the density difference between the air and the water. Well, the same is true with the core and the cladding. The core is made up of this ultra pure glass and then the cladding is made up of doped glass. So you add some ions to it and make it heavier and all of a sudden it's reflective. Now we can shoot light at an angle down this and it'll just reflect and pop out the other side. Now, what makes fiber so important is that by just flashing this light and using some advanced modulation, all of a sudden you can carry data at extremely high speeds. So this stuff is super duper important to us because you know, with that, we use single, uh, single mode fiber where the core is extremely tiny. Um, you know, this stuff is just super duper small. You can see that fiber optic strand is listed as 125 microns. A human hair is 100. Um, really, that core, though, is a tenth the size of that. So very, very small stuff that we're working with here. So to make it easier to work with, we put it together in ribbons, like one that I have here. So we just color code everything because that's simple and that way we can work with it a little bit better. And this is totally what it looks like and this is how we transmit all of our data on that backbone network. So why do we do that? It's to keep it all safe and make it simpler, but then we need to protect it. And it's funny because I heard someone yelling earlier about, you know, the whole tubes thing. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about right now. We've got this tube that we shoot light down. 
And then we surround it with a bunch of other tubes. We've got this core tube. We've got the water blocking tape that's like a tube. We've got this metal armor that's like a tube. And it's like so painful for me to say this because Ted Stevens, uh, you know, Senator Ted Stevens had this whole talk about how the internet is a series of tubes. And everyone made fun of him. But if you take that one soundbite out of context and you say the internet is a series of tubes, you're actually not wrong. Um, but so when we look at this, uh, this is right under PAX. So that Palo Alto Internet Exchange, really all those different you know, colors that we saw, all those other companies, this is those wires actually leaving that building and going to connect to other central offices as well as other data centers. So the orange inner duct that you see there has all of the you know, glass tubes with all of the other stuff surrounding it to keep it safe. So tubes on tubes on tubes were something like 12 layers of tubes deep looking at that orange inner duct. And then the stuff on the left, all that black uh, stuff, is the old copper infrastructure. So this, this is actually super heavy. Um, this is called an F1, and this is just copper pairs over and over and over. And the crazy thing is, is one of these little strands of fiber is significantly faster than this whole super heavy thing. You know, this stuff on the right, the crazy thing about it is, you know, we all live over here on the West Coast and, or at least right now, um, you know, 20 to 25% of your internet traffic is flowing right through that stuff on the right. And the reason that I'm bringing it up is because the way that we took that picture is by pulling into a parking garage, parking in a spot right in front of it and going click, and that stuff is just sitting there. As we keep going, all of this stuff goes down the streets, and if we want to keep checking it out, uh, you know, we have to go to outside plant. Outside plant is anything really outside of the data centers, outside of that central office. Uh, and so, you know, our CTO, Nathan Patrick, he has no problems just going into a manhole. Uh, me, on the other hand, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that, man. That sounds horrible. Um, and the funny thing is, is he had to put that blower in there because there's just noxious gas. So he's got to clear that out. He drops his little gas meter in, and he's like, oh, it's totally safe, man. No, no thanks. I don't, I don't want to do that. So he climbs inside, and this is what you ultimately see. It's all of that interduct and all of this stuff being run from town to town, from city to city. And really, that's just the way that it goes. It goes to the next manhole. It goes to the next building. And then we just plug in more networks. And that is really the idea behind the internet is let's just connect all these networks. Um, and so, yeah, if we go to the next one, this is a central office. So a little bit different than that data center, just in the fact that this is getting that last mile connectivity still for you guys at home. So really one of the big jobs that this building does is convert that backbone fiber to copper. So that way you're getting slower internet. Um, that sucks. Um, but they're able to keep using the existing infrastructure. So this picture on the left, you can see all these windows along the side there. And the crazy thing is, is along the left, I thought those were more windows. Those are actually doors. Uh, instead of installing a freight elevator, it was just cheaper to go ahead and crane all of your equipment in. And that was because back then they were like, dude, all we're doing is making phone calls. Who cares? Um, when are we going to replace this equipment? Every 10 years, 15 years? Well, obviously, we repurpose this infrastructure at this point. So that way, we're able to deliver internet over it. And things change a little bit faster on the internet than 10 to 15 years. So along the right are all of these DSLAMs. And their main purpose, like I said, is just converting that fiber backbone over to copper to get to your house. Because when you guys look on the side of your house, you're not seeing a place for fiber to connect up. You're seeing a bunch of copper things attached to the side. And that's what you plug into is some phone jack on the wall. So you know, back to how quickly the internet changes versus what they were planning. Uh, here is one of the core routers of the internet on the bottom right. This is a Cisco 12,000 series. This is one of like the biggest, baddest, just best routers that you could possibly get. This thing costs a little bit less than a million dollars, but it's the one. So what's crazy is, is after getting it, five years later, uh, our CTO was watching Burn Notice and saw that it was a TV prop. So what's funny is, is thankfully everything has gotten small enough that we can just use the commercial elevator to bring it up with us and we can just carry it in. But at the same time, there's been no forethought to, to how to deal with this stuff. So 
we're stuck with all these limitations to copper. I'm pretty lucky. I live in downtown Santa Rosa, and so I live very close to a central office, which means that my internet speeds aren't that bad. But if you move a mile away from downtown, your speeds start to suffer dramatically. And that is a limitation of copper. Uh, your attenuation goes up. You have way more loss. Whereas with fiber, that's really not the issue. Uh, if you see light, you get full speeds. So you just get a gigabit. I mean, there's not really a question of, do I see light or not? It's just, it's either you do, that's it. So when it comes to fiber versus copper, really one of the big missions at Sonic that we want to do is bring fiber to your door. And the reason is right here. You know, whenever my friends tell me that something is a million times better, it means nothing. That's dumb. It doesn't, you know, I have no way of like really putting it in my brain. Uh, however, this idea of fiber versus copper, again, I kind of go to the same thing. It doesn't make sense. It's a million times better. So when we tried to figure out things that were a million times different, it is the equivalent of walking around a track is the same essentially as walking to the moon. Uh, these things are not comparable whatsoever. And so really getting fiber delivered as soon as possible to your home is what's, what's important to us. And, you know, we've been falling behind. Susan Crawford has mentioned this, and, you know, Americans aren't quite aware. I think people are a lot more aware lately. At the same time, you know, I think there's pretty much two real big reasons for why, you know, the United States infrastructure is in the state that it is. Uh, one of the reasons is because, you know, we've been adopting this technology and building it out for 100 years. Um, we're trying to utilize that and trying to be able to get as much out of it as we possibly can. Well, at some point, you kind of just have to look and go, it's time for the next. And the reason that we really haven't moved on is because there's no competition. And so what we really need is competition because a lot of our privacy laws have been retracted. And if we can have some kind of competition with ISPs, all of a sudden you start to get companies who pop up with better privacy policies. Once we leave the central office, this is where we're really getting to that last mile connectivity. So on the top left is this bird's eye view, but I love this picture on the right. This is in Sebastopol, California. Uh, and so this is actually just right near my home. Uh, you really get to see the evolution. Yeah. Uh, you really get to see the evolution of telecom on this one telephone pole here on the right. So those bottom two are old school twisted pair copper. It's what the phone systems is delivered over. It's what DSL gets delivered over. Um, it's been there for a long time. Just above that is coax. So Comcast delivering cable TV, uh, more copper. It's just a, a different kind of wire, but it's still the exact same thing. And then just above that is Sonic delivering fiber. And from there, we can actually bring that directly into your home, and that way you can get gigabit internet. And it's pretty cool to see all three of them along the way. Um, you know, looking at this, what's fun to me about it is you look at this twisted pair of copper uh, for the telephone, and no one really knew what it was ultimately going to be used for. And so all of a sudden, coax shows up, and you're getting TV and all that, and all of a sudden, fiber shows up. I don't know what it's going to be used for. Uh, eventually, there's going to be a lot more uses than what we have now, and I love that kind of idea. So that's really our mission at Sonic, is to bring that as close to your home as possible, because really, when it starts off, that is the backbone, right? I mean, we went from the interstate system of where it was all copper, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at you going, well, we need more data. And then there's fiber backbone everywhere. But there's not fiber to homes yet. And that really is a big mission that we have to be able to speed up the internet here at Sonic. So fiber is definitely the future. And we've done a lot of build out work in San Francisco specifically. And so I would really encourage you guys to go ahead and take a look and see if we're available for you. Uh, and you'll get a first month free if you go to sonic.com slash nerds. So yeah. yeah.